Live. Amen. Hello and welcome to the Vitamin E Show. Hey, today, amen, you're going to get a, a, a dose of Vitamin E from none other than Prophetess Deanna Morris. Amen. <laughs> amen. We're welcoming Pastor Deanna. Amen. She's going to give us some encouragement, some inspiration, and some education. Pastor D, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Well, one thing is, for some of you, I am Pastor D, Prophetess D, life coach, your home girl, your sister, and, and, and look, and your mentor, and I accept and walk in all of those titles. I am a certified life coach. I am a strategist. I also am an empowerment speaker. I am um, a servant. That's what I like people to know, and I'll serve in any capacity that I can that will help expand you to the next level of where you need to be in life. And I really believe that we all have a destiny. Sometimes we don't know how to get there, but my job is I am that person that is going to push you and expand you to your fullest potential. Amen. Yes, you do. If you've ever come in contact with Pastor D, amen, you definitely will know because she leaves a mark everywhere she goes. Amen. Oh. She will push you to be complete in who you are. Amen. And she will push you into my next question, which is, hey, come on, we want to hear a little bit about purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. And how do I find my purpose? Listen, one of the biggest mistakes that we make, we think we have to find our purpose. We don't have to find it. It's already in us. Our purpose is simply that thing that we will do no matter what. You can be homeless. You can be without a, a job. You can be uh, have a Fortune 500 company, but there is something that's in you that you find yourself doing no matter where you go. Even when you don't want to do it, you say, I'm not going to do it anymore. I can't think about it anymore. It just comes out of you. It could be being a mom. It could be being a nurturer, a business person. Let me tell you, as much as I say, I'm not going to do administration, I'm going to give it to somebody else. It's what I do. I can't get away from it. My purpose, I'm a talker. I mean, hey, when I don't yeah. want to talk, I talk. <laughs> I can get on the phone and talk. I can get on the screen. I can talk to myself. So it's not about finding your purpose. And that is the mistake that people often make. They're trying to find their purpose. And it's already in them. If you really look at the things that you do, that you're passionate about, if you like to cook, I can guarantee you this is the thing about your purpose. You'll get lost in it. You can start off in the morning saying, I'm going to do this, 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 this. But that one thing that you like to do, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself stuck doing it and you, met, you didn't do anything else that was on your schedule. If I sit down at a computer and I That's have it. plans for the day, it is over. I'm not going to do anything else but whatever I'm doing administrative-wise on that computer, and I've lost the whole day because that is what my purpose is. And so that is the busy, biggest misconception that people think they have to find it. No, it's already in you, and what happens is you just have to identify it, and you get lost in it. Some people's purpose is to be a mom, and they get lost in being a mom. And when they're, even when their kids get older, they go back and find somebody else to mother. <laughs> so that's the biggest come thing. On, come on, move in over here to Brown's house. <laughs> I want to nurture you. I want to cook for you. Just yes. <laughs> yes. I have, I, have, um, I have come in contact with so many people that always say, I don't know what my purpose is. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. And if, if on the outside, if we observe them, we can truly identify it. And then when we tell them what it is, they're like, oh, that's just something that I do. No, that's what your purpose. <laughs> and the next thing about once you can identify what the purpose is, you have to be able 
to make your purpose marketable. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And somebody say, how do how do I make being a mom marketable? And I don't right. mean marketable in the sense of always making mm. money. Marketable means being able to give information, to be a resource to others. That's marketable. People will sow into you. People will follow you. You will create a following just uh, telling people about doing things with kids. You'll create a following just by cooking. I have a, a lady, I teach a course called uh, Aim Impact. And uh, one of the clients, she loves to cook, but she also loves Jesus. So she was like, well, I want to do both. And she said, but I can't get people to come. I want to do a feed you, feeding, feeding you with Jesus or something she was saying. And I said, this is the strategist in me that popped up. I said, well, why don't you go live, cook your food, and give them scriptures and talk them through what the Lord is telling you while you cooking. Oh. Mm. It's, it's not about, it's, we always think our purpose is centered around how much money we make. It's not, it's about that thing that makes you happy. And when it makes you happy, you will make money off of it. Yeah, yes, Norman Peel wrote a book, Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. Yeah. And that is so true. And the thing about it is you won't even set out to make money. Mm -mm. And, and you will just end up with resource after resource. It will chase you. Your purpose will chase you down. Yes, it will. You know, yes, it will. It will chase you down. I, I, we um, just had shared with Zoe on yesterday that she's a mom of twins, two sets of twins. And I was like, Zoe, you really need to um, get your YouTube up and going. She said, well, yes. I have one. I said, you need to get on it. I said, you are excellent. I mean, it, you wouldn't even think that it's four kids home under the age of seven in her house, and she's on a live right now, you know, and she's in school full time, and she's a, um, the administrator at church. You wouldn't think that she could balance all of that and everything. People want to know, how do you do it? And not only that, here's the thing about um, finding your niche. Getting on uh, that is such a good good suggestion, but here's the thing what makes it easy people want to know that you're transparent, they want to know. So, if you if Zoe, if you were to do that and do a, a YouTube or a weekly Facebook live, guess what? They're gonna follow you because they're gonna watch your babies. Your babies are adorable, so that's your first thing right there. <laughs> they're gonna follow you for the babies alone. But here, yes. here's what happens to us. Um, in, in this whole passion piece and, and, and getting to getting started. The problem is we expect when we get started that we got to think about how much money we got to spend, what is it going to look like. You do need a plan, but the plan is not as big as you think it is. It's not about the money. It's about the quantity. When I started life coaching, I was giving away free coaching because I wanted people to know that I knew what I was talking about. Then when I started doing the strategy stuff, and listen, with your passion, you what happens is you're doing it for yourself. And because you're doing it for yourself, you see somebody else that need it and you start doing it for them. And then you realize, okay, this is something that I can do. Listen, this is the thing about your passion. My husband and I had this conversation yesterday. He asked me a question. He said, when you were a little girl, what did you used to do? And I'm sitting there like, what? He said, when you were a little girl, what did you do? Did you play with baby dolls? Did you da da da? So I'm sitting there thinking. And I said, no, I didn't play with baby dolls. I said, I ran for pageants and I got up and talked on the stage. And if they had a black history program, I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to get up and talk in front of people. I wanted to be the MC. I wanted to do all this. I said, so I looked at him. I said, pretty much the same stuff that I do now. Think about that. Think about your life where you are right now. Think about those things that you did as a child. Do those things that you do now look similar? And sometimes it doesn't look, it doesn't come into alignment until you become mature. When you mature in your life, you kind of settle and go back to, you You know, have you ever seen those men that they were a businessman and then all of a sudden they started riding a motorcycle? They didn't just start mm -hmm. riding a motorcycle because right. they retired. That was something they did and wanted to do as a child. And now that they're settled and mature, they go back to those passions yes. that they had as children. Yes. So yeah. yeah. Zoe, you got the your next up. That was that was really good because I often think about that. Like, what is my purpose and how do I find it? And 
Yeah, everybody is like the same thing. What's well, already in you? It's like, but what? What is it? I have so much things that I like to do. It's like, so what do I do with all these things? How do I mesh them all to one that I can be successful? That is absolutely wonderful question. Because what we do is overthink it. We have all of these talents, and we cannot use them all at one time. <laughs> Right. Excuse me. Me and Pastor Colette. <laughs> Sometimes we are an exception to the rule. Yeah. But but listen, this is what this is what I've learned um in my own life and in those that I have coached. What you do, you find that one thing that you want to start off doing and it grows and it connects to the next thing. So I started off as I've always been a person that wanted to be a motivational speaker for many, many years. Even as a child, I wanted to be a motivational speaker. I always wanted to get up and talk in front of people. So my first time ever speaking in front of a crowd, I was 14 years old, and I had to go to my friend's school to talk about health issues because I had gone through a bone marrow transplant. So for years, that's all I would do. I knew I wanted to write a book, but I never wrote a book. So I went to talk in places. Anywhere that they would let me come and talk, I would go talk. Scared, but I would go. And then after I um, started the speaking, I was like, okay, I want to write a book. I really want to write a book. I want to be an author. So what am I going to write about? But I thought I was going to write about health issues, but I wound up writing about something else. So then I put the speaking down and started focusing on being an author. Then I want to be a life coach. I want to do this. I want to help people, which is what I was doing without the certification. And what happens is you do little segments of whatever it is that you want to do. And so now I'm at a place where the life coaching took over. And so when I was having group sessions, it it broadened me that I could have a stand up in front of a crowd. And now I uh, can talk to people and coach them at the same time. The first experience that I had with it, I felt like my whole world had come alive. Not only was I helping people, but I was, I was coaching and standing up, giving empowerment speeches at the same time. And then it transitioned into the writing. So the stuff that I teach for my coaching is now becoming a book. Yes. So that's Multi- the thing. You pick those, you pick everything builds off of the next thing. So it's like, uh, this is what I call it in the AIM class. It's called uh, Upward, Outward Expansion. So you go whatever, so you start off on this level and you got to go upward. So that means you go to the next level of it and then you expand out. You expand your reach out. So whatever your purpose is, it should build on it. When it builds, it should expand. What does expansion look like? Collaboration. Yeah. Didn't we just talk about that? Yeah. We just talked about that. You've got to, you've got to enlarge your circle and you've got to get around people who are going to push you. Yes. You never want to be with anybody on your same level. You want to be around people who pull you and push you and nudge you to where you should be. You know, um, I'm less laughing because I know I passed a because I told her, Zoe knows, I don't even like this I'm camera. I'm going live. I don't want to be on no video. Live. But let me just say <laughs> this. God is pushing me, pulling me, and tugging me. I told Zoe, I said, listen, um, I'm going to do some, you're going to do some, and some of the other women at church are going to do some and everything because I want everybody to get that experience mm-hmm. and get out of your place of being comfortable because this is the new normal. Yes. But look me when I tell you this is the new normal. This is the way you're going to do parent-teacher conferences. This is the way you're going to do interviews. This is the way you're going to talk to the bank. This is the way you're going to talk to your doctor. You're going to talk to your lawyer. This is the way we're going to go to court and do little small court cases like traffic court and stuff like this. This is the new normal. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you remember looking at the Jetsons. I was I, just about to say that. This is We are living in the Jetsons. Only thing we ain't got is a little space car. Listen, All right? 
I was just about to say that this is like the Jetsons. We used to look at the Jetsons and they'd be on the screen talking to each other. Mm -hmm. This is identical to that. And and I'm laughing because she <laughs> she was talking about pulling you and being having people. I am a firm believer that if you have people on your level, this is how life works. You have this is where you are. The mm -hmm. people that fall here, your responsibility is to pull them up here. So right. this is you. This is the next level. Well, y'all can barely see my hands. Your responsibility is to reach down and pull up to your level. And then there should be somebody above you that pulls you to the next level. There should never be a place where you're going down, 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 down. Right. And so with that, mm -hmm. here's what I've learned. Oh, my goodness. This is going to expose something that's going to, y'all going to hold me accountable for. So I decided, my husband actually decided for me, that I am going to become a certified um, personal development coach for women. My specialty will be per personal development, which meant I had to go find a life coach that was not on the level with me. And people say I'm a pretty hard life coach because I'm going to keep pushing. So I had to find somebody that had a lot of more push than me. And my goodness, did I find her. And she scared me the first day. <laughs> wow. and, and so she scared me, but it was a, a fear that pulled me up. You got to go higher. You've been doing this long enough on this level. Let's go up a level. So with that, um, you know, I'm that person that follows up. Pastor Colette always laughed at me. She said, you're going to keep following up with people. Well, she followed up with me on some Deanna stuff, like 7 o'clock in the morning. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? <laughs> And I'm like, don't nobody do that but me. Why are you doing me like that? And my husband said, he said, that's exactly what you need. So I have somebody that's holding me accountable. That's another thing about your purpose and expanding. You have to have people that will hold you accountable, that will push you beyond what you see. Their, their vision has to be bigger than your vision. They have to see you differently than you see yourself. Like when I see Zoe, I always know that even though she's a mom, there's this other aspect of her that is busting out at the seams, but she still wants to kind of do like this. And I'm like, no, that ain't who she's supposed to be. So I was excited when I saw you as one of the co-hosts. <laughs> so there's so much and so much information about purpose. But the main thing is you just have to do it. You have to start somewhere. The yeah. initiation process, getting started, and it doesn't look big all the time. It's just simply where you are, your circle of people, and making the initiative to go forward. And during this season um, in our lives, God is exposing us um, to kingdom divine connections. Yes. And um, the purpose of the Vitamin E show is to showcase God's kingdom. Yes. And to provide godly kingdom connects. Um, so through that, exposing other women to other entrepreneurs, to other life coaches, to moms that are doing great jobs, to teachers, to yes. educators, to professors, to preachers, to teachers, yeah. exposing them, giving them a dose. Because when, sometimes when you see other people doing something, it sparks something on the inside of you. And so when God gave me the assignment, I know I am a midwife. I am a birther. Yeah. I'm a pusher. And this is what God said. That you got to push people from their place of being comfortable to the place where I can use them Absolutely. and elevate them. And he said, I'm going to make a platform. It's going to seem small at first, but it's going to expose them to a whole nother world. So um, in all of this, even, you know, you're being pushed, Pastor D. Zoe's being, I know she's being pushed because she wasn't going to get on. And I said, no, you came to me and told me, God told you that you are to be my assistant. I take yeah. you at God's word. And if you're supposed to be my assistant and you're supposed to alleviate the stress off of me, then I need you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I need you to, what do you need to succeed? You need a calendar? Amazon will deliver you one. What else? <laughs> whatever you need, the tools that you 
you need to be successful as your pusher. And as that person pulling you, we've got to supply you with the tools that That's you right. need. Thing. So if you need coaching, we supply you with coaching. You need, right. you need whatever you need, we supply you because guess what? We're not going to be here always. And we got to, you got to make sure you leave a legacy. So right. when you leave a legacy, you don't want to leave a legacy that's falling apart. They got to come and, um, you know, somebody leave you a house and you got to, before you can even move in the house, you got to have it exterminated, painted, new car, yep. new new roof and everything no mm -hmm. when you leave a legacy you mm -hmm. leave a person a rich legacy the house is already clean furnished ready to move in new furniture new paint everything's done when you move in only thing you have to do is occupy that's and right. keep, keep so amen um i know that's kind of like whoa way <laughs> up and everything no it's not well, it's when it comes to our purpose, because let me tell you what, purpose is so, so very important. And I'm going to let Zoe take the next question, amen, um, regarding purpose, because I'm sure she's got some questions for you, Pastor D. <laughs> no, I'm just, um, just trying to get there. Um, but I don't know, regards to purpose, like I said, I um, try to manage them and I guess once you become able to manage them, I guess I will, I'll speak for myself. Right now, I'm in the stage where I have dabbled in a lot of things. I am an EMT. I'm about to graduate from cosmetology school. Uh, me and my <laughs> sisters growing up, we had a cookie business, and I'm trying to redevelop that and redo that, but incorporate also my son who has allergies, food allergies, try to change and tweak different recipes to try to fit his his lifestyle because I know that's kind of a big thing now with being vegan and no dairy, no nuts, no no none of the, the eight main allergens. So um plus I'm a mom, I'm a wife, just trying to balance everything. Um so with that being said with my purpose and I know a lot of other women are out there thinking like, man, that's a lot. But I really have peace with all of it. I'm really calm. But Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. I'm like, I mean, when I, I know with me, when I have the, the youngest two, um, because I try to do two at a time and everything, <laughs> they can be um, you know, just little people and everything. They when they come over, they're the boss, like grandma. Um, you know, and I was telling her, you know, I said, you've done such a great job with them. I said, um, when we go to the store, people ask me, you know, like, how do they have such an extensive vocabulary? Because this morning the baby said that she wanted sushi. And I was like, wow. She, I said, yeah, when we go to the store, she says, um, grandma, I need sushi because my mom lets me get sushi. And I'm like, and, um, I'm gonna going to tick tack on the um the um, recipes. See, when God when God blessed you with your son and with me as your mother in law, He put us in your life for a reason because we don't we can't have gluten and now I'm vegan, right. so you can bake and everything. I'm gonna take the cooking part except for spaghetti, which everybody knows she makes much better spaghetti than me. Which, which she already got the trophy. That's fine, um, but. <laughs> Those things, believe it or not, there's not a wide variety of gluten-free, dairy-free, coconut-free, soy-free food that tastes good. Mm -hmm. So the, it, it's like not a lot that you can even choose from. So, you know, to be able to come up with those type things and everything, that's a niche, amen. Yes. That is a real niche and everything. And only thing you have to do is be persistent. Be yeah. persistent. Yeah. And, and I know that like with Pastor D, we do a lot of collaborations and everything. Um, sometimes people think that we um, are the energizer bunny. People ask, do y'all ever sleep? Do y'all ever, what do y'all do all the time? And literally I can get up on my computer at 6 a.m. and be on my computer till one or two o'clock in the morning. Yes. And I am not just playing on my computer. I am working. I am researching because I feel like, amen, that is so much knowledge and so much yes. work. 
yes. wealth out here that I just need to, you know, um, how can I help the next person? And see, a lot of times people get very selfish when it comes to purpose too. That's it, right and there. They get really selfish and everything because their purpose is for me, mine, and my, you know, just me and mine and everything. But no, when you're kingdom minded, it's like, who else can I help? Can I share the wealth? Can I, who else can I expand and everything? And that's where that thing talks about that expansion. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about it. That's that expansion. Who else can I help? Who else yeah. can I help? Yeah. And, everything. and you always need somebody that you can bounce off of. So Pastor D, we're going to give you the final words and everything. We're looking forward to it. You and your ladies always come to the Will and Win Conference yeah. and we're we're praying, amen, and we're preparing. Zoe and I, we've been preparing along with Janelle and some others. We've been preparing for the conference. So we're looking forward to it. The doors should be open. Yes. Um, we'll still be able to social distance, but we'll still be able to, you know, love on each other, give God the glory, amen, hallelujah. So come on, share with us, amen. Let me let me say this. Uh, I want to touch this before I go into. I mean, I'm excited. I'm ready for the conference. I'm telling you. I think that might be our first <laughs> conference when we come out of this. But I want to talk to say this in something that Zoe made me think about, and this is definitely for co-pastor, pastor, and I. You have to find that time of self care. You have to find because we do so much, and self care doesn't always look like this big getaway. It's just a moment, like, I, I had to take a moment where, you know, somebody's like, well, y'all quarantine, you're not even doing nothing. Just because we're home doesn't mean we're not doing anything. We're <laughs> constantly doing something. And so I had to take the time one day and just say, this is a TV day for me. I'm not taking any calls. I'm, this is just me watching TV. You have to find those little things that you like to do. Get into bed with some crunch and munch and whatever and stay in there for that day. Crunch and munch, that's my thing, 7-Eleven crunch. <laughs> so, so that you can readjust because it does become a lot of weight when you're doing so many things. And so you're doing a lot. So you have to take that time to re regroup. And Pastor and I always check on each other. Are you okay? Have you rested? And it's so funny for us to say, have you rested? When we know the answer already, no. And we say we rested and we're not resting. But I want to talk about the conference. Listen, y'all, I'm so excited. Every year I've been going, I think I moved back to Richmond in 2015. Yes. And I've been going every year and I missed like a couple of days. One year I did something. But I am so excited about the conference. It is always amazing. I always make new friends, but not only that, I'm always poured into, it's, it's such a safe place for women to come in and get what they need in every aspect. If you're looking for a friendship, if you're looking for something spiritual, if you're looking for deliverance, it, it, it is such a safe place. And for me, my all-time uh, joy for the conference is you are treated like royalty. <laughs> yeah. Let's love it. Listen, if you have in anything down to a simple allergy, the bath gel, <laughs> you can't use nothing but that sensitive stuff. Everybody knows, even the next year, we got you some sensitive bath gel. So it is, it is, it is, it is real. They pray, they seek God about what they're doing and the purpose is for women to be empowered and to go to the next level, not just naturally, I mean, not just spiritually, but even naturally to become who you are supposed to be. And sometimes we don't even know how to interact with each other. And this is a safe environment. I will say every year that I've gone, I've always felt safe. I can be Pastor D, I can be Coach D, I can be Deanna if it's okay for me to be Deanna. And that's a good place where you don't always get that when you go to conferences and you leave better. You're not just going to get a bag. Can I uh, say? T-shirt. You're not going to get a bag. Yeah. They, they, they think about you and they take time to even just make sure that you have everything that you need. I am so honored to be, uh, a, I call myself uh, a part of newness as well. You know, we, we at the ministries, but I'm a part of newness too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so excited about all that you're doing, Pastor Colette. I'm telling you, it is amazing to see God stretch you. The same person that said, I'm not, I don't want to be, I mean, just two months ago, I don't want to be on no camera. But <laughs> what the Lord has done, and it is absolutely amazing. And the biggest thing that you always say that stays with me, and I share everywhere that I go, 
we are not, we are better together. We yes. are better yeah. together. And yes. if we get, as the body of Christ realize that we're not in a competition, we're trying to impact the kingdom, we're trying to touch the lives of people. And if that means that my little bit gonna help your little bit, let's put it together and change somebody's life. If we're yes. just out here being busy bodies and don't want to share, which goes back to what we were talking about purpose, my purpose mm -hmm. is to impact the kingdom. Yes, it's to absolutely. impact the earth, and how can I impact the earth if I'm not willing to share information? Yes. So, um, so I just honor you, ladies. I thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Amen, Pastor D. Before you leave, come on, share with us life, who you are as far as your life, how oh, you yes. your yes. life coach yes. and your ministry. Amen. Because oh, we always so want to so wrap our ministry. Amen. Okay, so. Yes. I, I have the honor and the privilege of co-pastoring the Ministries RVA, currently located at 3657 Speaks Drive, Midlothian, mm. Virginia. Hallelujah. Wait till you see the reveal of what the Lord has done during this yes. COVID crisis. Absolutely. It might have been a crisis, but it sure wasn't a famine. Hallelujah. Huh? So, <laughs> so I am so excited yes. to reveal that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to unveil the the new ministries, the new location, and all that God yes. has done. Also, I am the life, I am a life coach. I said that before, a strategist and a speaker, author for Life Seeds Coaching and Developing Firm. We offer everything from, I'm a certified um, relationship facilitator. I am a certified life coach. About two days ago, I became a certified life goal coach. I am working on my master life coaching certification. So hopefully by June, that will be completed. Uh, also, uh, my ministry, I am a prophetess and I operate in the fivefold ministry. I do a lot of women's ministries, operate in a lot of deliveries along with my husband. So I am honored. You know, I'm telling you, I am one of those people that say it all the time. When I leave this earth, I want to be done poured out every single thing in me. There yes. is so much potential in the grave. And let me tell you, when I leave, I want to leave an impact and a legacy. I want to know that I've touched people. And when I walk away from whatever God is, whatever area he's taking me, I want to know that I'm le I've left somebody in that spot that know how to fulfill it. Yes. Mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely. Lord. Yes, yes. Amen. Zoe, close us out. Well, we want to thank you again for coming on the Vitamin E show with us. Um, and we hope that you join us for a later date, maybe a, a update on what's going on in your certifications and with your yeah. ministry and everything that you're doing. So hope to speak with you soon. We love yeah. you. Thank you guys again. Love you.